My name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. I've been sewing for about 25 years now, I know, hard to believe, and I'm here to share all of that knowledge and experience with you. I'm releasing a new video about once a week and it will be full of tips and tutorials to make sewing easier and more fun for you. So if you'd like to follow along, you can hit the subscribe button down below and click the little bell to be notified when new videos are released. Today I'm going to be talking about the twin needle. The twin needle is much like a regular needle. It has a shaft at the top that is inserted into the sewing machine, but below that it has two needles. So when you sew with one of these, you're going to have two spools of thread at the top and then your bobbin like normal. So as you stitch, it will create two parallel lines of stitching on the right side of your fabric and then below that, the bobbin thread will kind of zigzag back and forth between the two threads that are on the top. So sometimes this can get a little bit tricky for people because that bobbin thread can get kind of tight and create a ridge. I've heard some people have problems with their thread breaking. So today I'm going to give you some of my tips and tricks for dealing with those issues. Now I've used probably three different machines in the last few years with a twin needle and I found that they all behave really differently. So if you're having problems, just be aware that one solution might not work for you, but another one very well might help. So let's get started. My first tip if you're having problems with a ridge in your top stitching is to try woolly bobbin, or not woolly bobbin, it's a woolly nylon. <laughs> woolly nylon or fluff thread in your bobbin. So this is actually stretchy thread. It's comprised of a bunch of different fibers. You might recognize it from lingerie. It's um, often used there because it's really soft against the skin. So to use this, you hand wind it onto your bobbin to prevent it from stretching. And then you just put your bobbin into your machine as normal. And because this thread stretches, it reduces the chance of having that ridge in between your top stitching. I have found that this works really well when I was using my brother's C CS6000i machine. This was a great solution for me. And I'll have a link to this kind of thread in the show notes. My second tip is to use some sort of iron-on adhesive tape. So the way that you would use this is you cut a length of this tape that is the length of your hem and then when you're ironing up your hem you put the tape in between the two layers of fabric and you iron it in place. The tape is going to keep your fabric really secure and stable, so when you're stitching over it, it won't be able to make that ridge. A third tip could be that maybe you change the tension. I know. Um, it's not something that I've done before, but if it's easy for you to change the bobbin tension, that could be a solution. I also recommend that you Google search your machine type and what other people have done because there's a lot of information out there. So if you have a specific machine, someone else might have already troubleshooted it and they might have posted their solutions. Also make sure to reference your machine manual. Machines work differently and it's really important to know what the manufacturer recommends for your machine. Now I'm going to show you how to thread your machine for twin needle sewing. I already have the twin needle installed in the machine and this is done in the same way that you would install any needle. Next, you want to make sure that you have your extra spool installed on the machine and have a second spool of thread. Some people say that you can thread both threads through the machine at the same time but I recommend that you do them separately so that they don't get twisted. So I start with the main thread 
and you just thread it as normal going through all the knobs and brackets and then thread it through the left needle. Now we will thread our second thread and we will do these beginning steps all the same except once we get down to the needle we're going to skip this final bracket and just thread it through the right needle. So if we look closely here, we can see the left thread is behind this bracket above the needle and the right thread is not. You're now all ready to start sewing. Now I'm going to show you an example of actually stitching with the twin needle. Here I'm sewing the hem of a sleeve on a t-shirt. I've already surged the raw edge and ironed up or pressed up the edge of the hem. So I've slid it underneath the presser foot and I will lower the presser foot. And I'm going to try to keep the stitching right next to this surged edge because that will help prevent this hem allowance from turning over when you wear it. So we'll just start stitching. And I use about a 3.0 or 3.2 stitch length when I'm top stitching. approach my beginning point, I like to pause for a moment, keep it under the machine, and actually go in and tie off these ends. This is a lot easier to do when you're using woolly nylon in the bobbin, but I just pull the top threads to the wrong side and tie them in a knot. Okay, so this one seems like it's already a little bit knotted, but I've pulled my top threads through to the back side. And I'm just going to go ahead and tie them in a knot and trim the threads. This will help prevent the stitching from unraveling later. All right, and then just trim it. And we'll keep stitching. You just want to line it right up with your other stitching and go a few past the beginning and then lift your needle and lift the presser foot and then pull it away and leave kind of a long string. So we'll want to repeat the process and pull those top threads to the back side and tie a knot. All right, it's a little bit easier this time. So now I have three threads on the back side and I just tie a double knot. And then trim it. And that's it, you have a top stitched hem. Well, I hope that you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments what you've learned and if there are any other tutorials that you would like to see. Happy sewing!